Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I am here with my weekly wrap up. I got loads of books read this week so I'm just going to go straight on into it. The first book that I finished this week was An Almond for a Parrot by Ray Delaney. This is a book that I did my giveaway for um, and I have a book review up uh, for it already which I will link somewhere on the screen and below um, and you can find out all my thoughts on this book um, on the video review. I have like way longer review obviously so I really enjoyed this book I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and I would highly recommend people read it but I'd also recommend people watch my review for it so um, please go and do that. The next book I read was kind of a thriller mystery book called Unraveling Oliver by Liz Nugent and um, I got this from NetGalley this is a book that has been out in Ireland for a few years but it is coming out through Simon & Schuster and um, to uh, the to America soon. I actually got to see Liz Nugent at a crime writing festival that I was uh, at yesterday and I have bought her new one of her new books. She also has another new book coming out pretty soon as well. I'm going to have a vlog for that um, crime writing festival coming up this week as well so if anyone is interested in that please look out for that because there's loads of great crime authors and th thriller authors that were at that and um, such as Paula Hawkins who wrote The Girl on the Train and um, uh, John Banville who writes crime and um, thrillers under the name Benjamin Black and there was also Kathy Reichs at it um, and then obviously Liz Nugent was at it as well. Um, so Unraveling Oliver is basically all about this one man who has done something really really bad to his wife. The story starts with us knowing that Oliver is after really really badly beating up his wife and we know that she is in a really serious condition and that he has been arrested for this crime. Um, but what we start finding out is that Oliver is someone who a lot of people think very highly of. He's actually a little bit famous, he's a children's author and his books are very very successful, got turned into plays and uh, movies and stuff like that and we kind of start seeing different sides of Oliver from different people and um, there's like different chapters from people in Oliver's past like school friends, college friends, we find about, di out about different kind of trips he took uh, before he was married to his wife um, and things kind of start to unravel a little bit and kind of start to see a little bit more of Oliver, where he came from, the type of person he really is. We see that he's a little bit more manipulative than we first thought, that there's something really dark inside of him um, and it's just this kind of, this kind of spotlight on his character and we just start seeing how some things in his life aren't adding up. There's some lies he has told people, there's just some things that, you know, are just really creepy about him and people never kind of realised it before and then they're hearing about this awful crime that he committed and they're suddenly rethinking their entire uh, perspective on him. And I think one of the best things with Oliver is that he's someone who is very suave, he was handsome, he was flirtatious, he was able to get any women he wanted um, and then at the same time he was a children's author so I think that all what is what almost makes this even like more horrible when you're reading it is that this guy has done something really bad to his wife and isn't a good person yet he writes these wonderful stories for children and I don't know there's just such a discord there you're just like it just feels so wrong and um, but I did really really enjoy this book I gave it a strong three out of five stars and um, Liz Nugent was saying that it has been optioned before for a possible mini series but she doesn't know if it's going to go ahead or not but I think this is the type of book that would make a really 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 good tv series or a mini series because there's so many different uh, characters with their own like point of views about Oliver I feel like you could have like different episodes focusing on it different people in his life and kind of seeing different moments of his life um, and I just think that would be really really interesting. The next book I read was Max by Sarah Cohen Scally. This is like a YA historical novel I guess and it's about a little boy called Max who was born through the Lebensborn program and um, that Hitler set up during World War II or just before World War II. But Max was born in this program where he is basically like they were basically trying to create the perfect Aryan children, so blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, there was this program actually, like this was actually a real program that Hitler had created and children were born out of this. I think thousands of children were born out of this. But Max is basically born into this. We, we follow his story from the time he is a fetus and um, just about to be born and we hear his kind of creepy, his own kind of take on him as a perfect Aryan and how the fur is his father and you know he loves Hitler and he thinks Hitler's ideals are the proper ideals are his kind of view in the world is right that you know Jews are terrible and yeah he's very like anti-semitic for a lot of this book but we kind of see as he gets a little bit older he starts kind of asking a little bit more questions he meets different people that kind of throw 
all the things he has been kind of brainwashed into believing, they kind of throw it askew a little bit and he doesn't know what to think. Um, we see him, like, there's parts of it where he is used to find Polish children who look Aryan. And these children where they, he kind of helps the Nazis find where these children are living in Poland. And they take those children then and send them to special kind of schools in Germany um, to Germanize them. And I actually didn't know this was a thing. I had no idea this actually happened during World War II. Polish children were, taking, were taken who looked like, you know, the perfect Germans. The blonde hair, blue eyes kind of thing. Um, and that was just really, really interesting. Like, it was awful, but it was really, really interesting to know that this happened. Um, and I just really enjoyed seeing kind of just through the eyes of someone who starts off quite a horrible character and it's kind of bad to say that because he starts off as a literal fetus and he starts off as a newborn but I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars I do think it was really really good I do understand I have seen some mixed reviews of this I do understand people feeling a bit odd about it because obviously he is a little Nazi baby and you know there is a little bit about that that would make you uncomfortable um, but for the most part I did really enjoy this it was a quick read um, and I would recommend people check it out if they are curious about it. The next book I finished was actually an audiobook and it's an audiobook I've been reading for a few weeks and <sighs> I hated this book. Um, <laughs> it is Here I Am by Jonathan Saffron Foyer. I read it's Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Saffron Foyer a good few years ago um, around the time the movie of it was coming out because um, I thought the movie looked really really good and uh, I ended up getting the book and I hated it and I was so disappointed in the book but this just happened to be on my library app so I decided to pick it up, decided to give it a go and oh my god I really really regret that decision and um, I don't know why I didn't DNF it, I just kind of kept going with it to be honest um, and I think it might be just Jonathan Saffron Foyer's writing I think his writing just, I just don't get along with it because I have read something else by him and I've had the same reaction to it so I think at this stage I'm just not going to read any more of his books because there's no point because I obviously don't enjoy his writing but this one is about kind of this family um, of Jewish Americans and it's very much focused on being a Jew in America, and, in America and being Jewish American and their relationship to kind of Israel and Jews in Israel and stuff like that. There was parts of it that was interesting but for the most part I didn't, I hated it. Like I hated all the characters, I thought all the characters were just awful people. These people who whose lives were fine and they just wanted to be miserable so they were miserable kind of thing and just creating just such discord for themselves and disharmony for themselves in their lives and it was just so tiring and so negative and so annoying. I really hated it. And like, for some reason, everything kept being brought back to like sex and masturbation and bodily functions and I don't know why. And like, I have read graphic books, I have read books that would be deemed as erotic at times, you know, that have very graphic sex scenes and stuff and I don't mind that. Like, for some reason with this, it was just so vulgar and so crude, I just, I just didn't like it at all. And maybe it's because I was listening to it, I don't know, but it kind of kept seeing like all this stuff was being like talked about like the kid masturbating when he was like young or whatever and then just these different things like fantasies that the wife was having at one point and these texts the dad was sending at one point and I don't know just some of it was just like really unnecessary like it didn't need to be in there and I would think it was just in there for like shock value or just to have something a bit crude and vulgar in there and I don't know why and I just really hated this book and I gave it one star. The next book I read was Under the Visible Life by Kim Ecklin and this is about two different women um, who meet through kind of a love of music. It, they are both biracial. One woman is half Canadian, half um, Chinese and the other woman is half Afghani, half American and um, it kind of follows them just from the very start from the time they're children up to the time they are like middle-aged women with being married and having children and stuff like that and it's just kind of about the two of them kind of carving out their own paths in life even with a lot of obstacles in their way and um, so like through cultural differences and societal differences and just different things like that and I did really really enjoy this it was a really really quick read and um, I just liked the kind of format of it I liked the styling of it um, I definitely liked one character over the other. I liked Catherine a lot better than Massa. Catherine was the half Ch half Canadian, half Chinese woman, um, and I just thought her story was a lot more interesting. I just I liked her. I found Massa's quite frustrating at times because she ends up going into an arranged marriage at one point, and 
I feel like a lot of her reactions to things her husband was, do was doing wasn't enough. Like, I just really hated the fact that she kind of lay, let, like, lay, lay down at one point and just kind of let him walk all over her. And that just was really, really frustrating from a reader's point of view. So kind of dimmed my, I guess, my enjoyment of her chapters um, for a portion of the book. Where with Catherine, Catherine is very outspoken, very brassy, won't let people, like, do, like, you know, wouldn't let anyone walk all over her. Um, was determined to fulfill her dreams of being a pianist and being a musician and she was just really like and she had three children but she was ready to like you know she was going to do it even though she had three children she wasn't going to let the fact that she was like a sing basically a single mother hold her back and she was just really someone that you could definitely really admire um, and I just really enjoyed reading her chapters and um, so I gave this book a four out of five stars um, and I would really recommend it for people there are some uh, parts of this that are set in Pakistan and um, so that was pretty interesting so there is like a diverse kind of theme to this as well obviously we have diverse characters in this too and um, so yeah I would I would recommend the next book I finished was Shadow by Paula Weston this is a book I got off NetGalley and this one actually turned out to be a really really pleasant surprise for me I wasn't really expecting a lot of it this is about a woman called Gabby a young woman called Gabby who is trying to deal with the death of her twin brother um, and she has kind of some fuzzy memories from before this accident that she was in with her brother that cost him his life and she's kind of found this kind of little seaside home I guess um, to kind of take refuge in while she recovers both physically and men mentally from this accident. Um, and then one day this guy turns up and he's a guy that she recognises from her dreams because she has been dreaming about these like about demons and like fighting and stuff like that and this guy has been in all of them and then one day he is like in front of her in real life and she's like what the hell um, and it turns out this guy knows her but she can't remember him and then it turns out that her life is actually a lot different to what she remembers it that she has false memories of her life before her brother's death and there's something going on she is not what she appears to be um, and she has lost all her memories and it kind of goes from there. This was a really, really great take on kind of angels and demons and Nephilim and stuff like that, that I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, it was really, really action packed. There was loads of action in it. I loved all the characters in it. Um, and yeah, it was just really, really like, it was just a really pleasant surprise for me. Um, I also really liked the fact that this would be a YA book, but the character is about 19, 20, or she at least appears to be 19 or 20, like between 18 and 20 anyway. But I was reading her as someone in her like, middle 20s like her early to middle 20s and um, it could have been just because I was maybe reading her for like my own age was 25 and um, but there was just a kind of a mature quality to this book and a mature mature quality to her voice in the book that I really really enjoyed um, and yeah I just I just loved the fact that it did seem like that that it wasn't very immature that it was a mature kind of book like that um, and yeah so I gave this a four out of five stars and then the last book I finished was When the Floods Came by Claire Morrill this is a book I have been reading with Harriet Rose and we were reading this for the last two weeks and I have finished it today just because I wanted to get it finished before Booktubeathon um, and Harriet is almost finished she's about halfway through so she's going to try and finish it today as well um, and this is about a girl called Rosa who is living in this kind of post-apocalyptic Birmingham um, and she is supposed to be meeting her fiance. He is. She met him online, and he is like kind of cycling across England to come and get her, and they can get married. And then one day, this kind of real strange guy just turns up in her family's like apartment, and he's kind of starting to tell on them about like this all this different kind of life and things that are happening in the outside world that they have no idea about. Um, but they just don't know if they can trust him either. This one was a really disappointing read for me. I thought, I don't know, I just thought there was just going to be so much more to it and there wasn't. Um, like, I just, I don't know. It's just, it was just missing something. Like, it was just very dull and boring for me. The characters were very bland. Rosa was 22. She, she kind of came across as 16. It was kind of like the opposite with Shadows by Paula Weston. It's like, this girl was 22 but she appeared 16 where Gabby was 18 or 19 and she appeared to be about 22, 23. Like she was a lot more mature where Rose and this is really immature. And then her brother Boris is 20 and you'd swear he was like 13 or 14 the way he acted a lot of the time. Um, and I just felt like the characters made a lot of stupid decisions, a lot of decisions that seemed to contradict earlier things that they had said or done. 
um, there wasn't anything particularly exciting about this book. There were no like real action scenes or anything. Like, I don't know. It was just really, really boring. Like, I've read good post-apocalyptic books, and this just wasn't it. Um, and it seemed to be like I like there's like the like kind of the apocalypse that came with this is kind of both climate and disease. And I don't know. I kind of was like pick one, you know, the kind of way. Um, so yeah, there was just. I don't know it's just yeah I just I, I can't even like say my thoughts of this it's just it was just disappointing and it was dull and it was flat and there was just no spark to it whatsoever and I gave it two out of five stars so that's everything I have read this week sorry to kind of end it on a bad note there but for the most part I really really enjoyed all my reads this week and then it'll be book Chupaton this week coming so I've loads of great books to read for that I will try and vlog that as much as I can I think um and yeah so please let me know what you guys think of these books if you've read any of the books that I've talked about what you are reading the usual thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys again next time